Welcome, everybody. Welcome back, as always. Tonight, we are going to begin turning our attention specifically for the first time to the idea of sacrament, which is the main reason you're here, right? But did it make sense to you to, to get grounded a bit? First of all, what is RCIA? What is scripture? What is prayer? Now, with that bit of a foundation, it makes a lot of sense that we can move forward and begin to dive into the mystery of God's grace. And that's what sacraments are all about. Sacraments are the ways that God touches our life in an intimate way by sharing his own life, the source of his own love. That's what grace is. Uh, today, Tani's going to work with me. So one of us will be up here leading the whole group, and one, uh, one will be back there making sure that technology is working fine, and together we'll make this flow. Okay. We want to continue to uh, give you some opportunity to use scripture. So I hope you brought your Bibles. If you did, I'd like you to find the Gospel of Matthew in the New Testament. And remember, if you didn't bring your book that we gave you, you always have the Bible at your fingertips because you've got this wonderful computer in your midst. And to give you, to reinforce again, something that we already talked about, here's an easy way to get to scripture. You go to the Bishop's website. Dana introduced this two weeks ago. And so this is simply usccb.org. And if you go up to readings here, it'll take you right to the daily readings. If you want to go beyond the week that's listed there, you just click on this icon here of a calendar and you can see the whole month of September. You can go backwards, you can go forwards. Okay. So today's the 21st. It's the 24th, the 25th week in ordinary time. There's the first reading. And by the way, I purposely chose today's gospel as our reflection. But you can, uh, just as importantly, always access a Bible here. No, no, no. Okay, if you go to readings, sorry. Bible, there you go. There's a couple of ways to get to it. And if you know the book that you're going to be using, click on books of the Bible. And it's just like your table of contents, Old Testament in order, New Testament. There's the book, the Gospel of Matthew. You go to chapter nine and there you go. So you always have a Bible with you. And there are apps that are actually Bibles that make it easier to navigate than this website. But this, this website, the great thing about this is it actually is the wording that is being used when it's read at Mass. Okay, just to give you an idea. All right, with that in mind, Tani, would you mind uh, beginning our prayer at the sign of the cross and then reading this gospel? You could read along, but it's important for us to remind you too, when you're by yourself, you're going to read, right? You don't have somebody reading to you unless you have an app that will read the words to you. But when you gather together as a group, that's the time when it's great to have one person proclaim scripture because if we believe it's the word of God, we believe God is speaking to us right now. So if we all listen to the same voice, the same instrument, uh, it's my experience that it, it more powerfully draws you into that mystery of this is really God speaking to us. So God's going to speak to us now using Connie's voice. Do you have to turn out and use my Bible yeah. I promise you this. Start with 
blessing Amen. As Jesus had passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs house. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at a table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. I'd like to show you an image to extend God's word a little bit more, to make it more tangible for us in our hearts. This is a famous painting by um, one of the masters, Caravaggio. And if you can get past the period dress, dress, right? This is not how Jesus would have dressed, nor Matthew or anybody else. But Caravaggio used the the dress of the day and this was painting and painted in the year 1600 so over 500 years ago but the reason why this endures as being such a powerful photo is by looking at the use of facial expression and light so jesus is up in the right hand corner here almost in the shadows you can see the halo around him and even though there's a person standing next to him, almost obscuring him, you can clearly see him pointing to Matthew. And I love Matthew's expression. Who, me? Okay. The reason this is so powerful is what you just heard proclaimed, Jesus said to a person who we now refer to as St. Matthew at a specific time and place. But when we hear that read to us, that's what Jesus is saying to us. Jesus is saying, simply, follow me. So whatever brought you here on the first day you came to RCIA, or the first time you decided to fill out the registration form online, and Deacon Don quickly <laughs> contacted you and had a conversation, that may have taken a long time for you to respond to. But in essence, it's the same process. It's Jesus in a very personal way inviting you to follow him. Don't lose sight of the second part of that gospel, though. The challenge is to follow him and be a part of his church, knowing that his church is a church of mercy, a church of forgiveness, a church of welcome, and a church of spreading the gospel message, the good news, and helping people to follow Christ more faithfully. It's not a church of judgment, or I'm better than you are, or I sit in a greater place or greater standing. And that's another part of this, because Jesus goes to Matthew's house to eat dinner with him after Matthew responded. We're told, follow me, he got right up and followed him. If you've seen any of the chosen, remember that I told you about that. That's a that's a really great scene. And in that scene, Jesus is just walking through a crowd, and Matthew's is at his custom post where he's being guarded by a guard, and and they just catch each other's eyes. And Matthew's been watching Jesus for a while, interested in him. And Matthew kind of walks by, catches his eye, continues to walk, stops. Matthew, follow me. And Matthew just closes up shop and follows him. And Jesus says, okay, we're going to have dinner tonight together. And he goes, oh, I'm not welcome at most places. He goes, oh, you'll be welcome at this place because we're eating at your house. <laughs> <laughs> but notice how he got judged right away by the other guests that came. And it wasn't Matthew being judged as much as Jesus was. How could you eat with this sinner? Right? And Jesus says in so many ways, I didn't come for those who were who aren't sick. I'm the divine physician. I came to 
Okay. A uh, big welcome to Jeanette. Jeanette, let's see. Let's let's see who who's joining us online. I think three of our four. Jeanette, give a wave. Hi, Jeanette. How are you? Uh, also with us is Sean. Sean's already given out a wave, and then Claudia. Welcome. Again, I know all of you have been here in person at times. Again, if life doesn't allow for anything other than to zoom in, that's why we have this hybrid. It's always better to be in person. So always try to do that. But um, no, we never question why people aren't here. We're just glad that you're here. Uh, and we're also hoping that uh, Mariana's going to join us. I know that's a daycare issue. So she may join us, not daycare, a child care issue. So she may be joining us a little bit later. But welcome to everybody that's here. All right, let's dive in with both speakers. Warning, this is not easy stuff. This is life, it's really deep. But Tanya and I are gonna do our best to connect life to it, but also not to shortchange you, okay? You're, you're coming to a relationship with God from a mature adult perspective. We're not gonna dumb it down for you, okay? We're not gonna give you child theology. Some of you are here because you never got something more than the children's theology, and you're struggling and saying, hey, I, I, it's gotta be more meaningful than this, it is. But it's going to be challenging too. Okay, ready to go. We're going to start off by talking. You guys are already showing you're good at that. <laughs> so um, I'm going to invite the two of you to see if you can join uh, a group too. So we just have uh, groups of four to six are usually the best. All right, if we have to have a group of seven, that's fine. You don't have to split up. The two you want to just turn around and join. Any group that's for okay. <laughs> All right, something simple. How many of you remember back to the first week? It was the first or the second week? I think it was the first week. And we watched a little bit of episode one of The Search. Do you remember the guy, Chris Stefanik, who was a very din dynamic host, right? So in that episode, Chris said this. Everybody online, you can see clearly. The title of the episode was, What Do You See? And he referred to something called the fundamental longing. So fundamental means at the heart, the basis of everything, there is a longing. Exactly what is this longing we all experience? We may not all experience it exactly the same way, but we all experience it. Just a little bit of time, warm yourselves up. What is that longing? We'll just, we'll just stay at that for a bit. Jason, you made our talk. All right, howdy, everybody. Hey, all right, sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Are we talking about the fundamental longings? Yeah, does anyone want to start? All right, so we're good now? Yep, we're good to go. All right, so give it a go, everybody. What is this fundamental longing that we all experience? What do you think this is? Um, I don't know. I think there's like a, a longing for like seeking happiness. Possibly that could be a longing in a spiritual Good. way. Good. So everybody wants to be happy. What do you, so 
what is it that actually makes us feel happy and fulfilled? What do you think, Claudia? Um, I don't really know. I think we all want to have a purpose, really, right? Like I, I think everybody needs to have a purpose. Okay. So, so we can't feel be. happy can't feel happy in this world if we don't have a purpose and know what that purpose is. Good, you guys are right on this. What, what would you add, Jeanette? You gotta unmute yourself. Okay, I think um, a, a longing, I guess it, uh, from personal experience, I guess you try to find um, like happiness maybe, um, in your surroundings, around people, around things, and then you realize that maybe that's not, I, it's like, I, I'm not sure how to put it in words. No, but. You're, you're taking the next step. You guys have gone in perfect <laughs> progression here. So we all want to be happy. We all want to be fulfilled. Um, can't do that unless we have a purpose to know what that purpose is. And now, Jeanette, you're saying we all spend our lives trying to find that purpose and that happiness in things. Yeah, and people and, in our and, relationships, in our life, um, okay. I, and I guess it, from personal experience, it, there's just always something like more, more, like you just you, you, seeking, I okay. guess, um, and then ultimately when he wants to come into your life, he he will, he just, I don't know, it's just miraculous, he'll, he'll every person's life, he'll come in different ways, in different situations, Um He'll just show himself to you. It's like this, this tugging, this pulling on your heart that you just, um, I don't know. I'm kind of, it's hard. It's hard to explain, but. Um, but it makes absolutely perfect sense because I had a very similar experience where like I was here and then I left and then I had that tug to like come back and, and be here and figure out what it is I'm supposed to do, you know? Yes. Yeah, I think we have like, we get accomplishments and then we're like, now what? But there's something else, like always something else pulling you. So, and I think yeah, it's like, this isn't it. There's yeah. more. Yeah. There's more. yeah. Very well said, Sean. <laughs> so you've all experienced that you do something that gives you happiness and joy. And then after that, it kind of fades away and it's like, okay, well, that's not it. That was a little bit of it, but so now you're looking for something that's going to give you that more lasting joy, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Good. You guys are spot on. Okay, we're going to bring you back in. All right, everybody, let's hear a little bit from each group. We'll start with our group online. What was the first thing the group spoke about? I think it was Sean. Sean, what was the first thing you said? The fundamental uh, longing, it starts with what? Like seeking happiness. Seeking happiness. How many of you talked about that? <laughs> so we're wired to be happy. And so we're always looking for what will make us happy. What else did you talk about? I think we, we, we talked about how like you can like accomplish all these things and they make you happy for a certain amount of time. Or even if you don't, but we're always seeking something bigger or in, it's hard to place our tongue. It might be a spiritual side to that. Okay, so we've all experienced that, right? Something that gives us joy, and it's like, that's it. And after a while, that fades. So there was something about that, but it wasn't it. It was maybe part of it, but we haven't drilled down to the core. Let's hear from some other tables here. What else did you talk about? We talked about a couple of us having it. Things are good, but they could be better. Like, it's not that I'm not happy. I just feel like I could be happier. And so we sought out something and 
of what we found was truly what was missing. And in particular, maybe not knowing we were missing something until we found it. Have you ever met somebody who just settles for good? Oh, it's good. It's good. I mean, we've all done that at times. And then after a while, it's like, well, good isn't good enough. You know, the saying, good is the enemy of great. Okay, we're wired for greatness. So we can't just settle for good. What else? What does this table look like? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> What one way? Okay, keep talking. <laughs> so we talked about at our table um, being comfortable, longing for comfort and peace and acceptance and connection and knowing we're loved and valued. Okay. And this table up here, what could you add to that? We want, we all wanted a deeper understanding to our childhood questions that we want adult understanding. Okay. Did anyone talk about this? Uh, part of the hunger is wanting to know what is our purpose? I mean, why are we here? And how can we? Did you do you ever feel like when you are making a difference in other people's lives that that gives you more of a lasting joy? Have you ever noticed that? Okay. Get this group back in. I, I think that I don't think we lost him. I think we just lost this one. All right, here we go. Technology, technology. Does anybody feel like they have an understanding of just what does fill that longing? <coughs> Has anybody bumped up against that? Something where joy is long lasting? Doesn't depend simply on you or circumstance. Well, maybe that's what tonight's about. <laughs> All right. So the ultimate human question. Well, it's twofold. If you believe that the sort where you come from is God, and and we're going to start with that because that's why we're here. If God is the source of where we come from, and therefore our purpose, and then you could say ultimately our happiness, then there's two human questions. Where is God, and how is God accessible in my life, right? Is God really someone who creates and gets everything moving, and then is on a perpetual coffee break? You know, good luck, everybody. Just keep it humming. I'm off on doing my own thing. Or is God a personal God <laughs> that created us out of love for relationship and therefore made us to be in relationship with him and we would say with each other? And so God wants to be accessible. Well, if God, if that's the case and God wants to be accessible, how come so often it feels like God's far away? For Christians, Jesus is the intersection between he heaven and earth. And you're going to hear this multiple times, but Connie and I are going to refer to this. Jesus is that bridge. So Jesus is fully God and fully man. Jesus is here present on earth and always present in heaven. That's the connection. So for a Christian, we would say, if you feel disconnected with God, where do you go? To Jesus. That's why father, the father sends his son. Okay. So as Catholics, we believe that the way that Jesus has set up for us to have these intimate encounters over and over again are sacraments. And though they may seem mysterious at first, because it's a lot of sign and symbol and ritual, it's because it draws us beyond our mind and engages our heart and our every sense, everything God created us to be into something deeper than what we can even understand or speak in words, understand what our mind is speaking. This is what sacraments are all about. So 
if we're going to understand this, we have to understand the narrative. Have you ever heard that before? We need to know our narrative. What's it? What does that mean outside of, of talking about sacrifice? So what does it mean? If you're a business, you have to understand your narrative. The story behind it. The story behind your business. Why does this business exist? What's the, the, the mission there for? And so how do you participate as part of this story and continue to help that story expand? So what's our narrative? Well, I would submit it to be summed up in three words, three R words, rescue, restoration, and reassurance. Rescue, restoration, and reassurance. What do we mean when we say rescue? Well, that's exactly what Jesus came for. He came to rescue us from ourselves. So you can look at that with the people of Egypt being rescued, remember, by God from slavery in Egypt. Well, that was a precursor for the grand narrative. Jesus came to rescue us from our own selfishness and sinfulness. And it's through, take a look at that cross right by Matthew and Kenny. It's through his giving his whole self, his death and resurrection. <laughs> That's the power of grace that flows through sacrament. And what happens when we participate in this? Our relationship with God is restored. It's a right relationship. And this fact that we are connected to sacraments, it's not a one and done thing. You know, some sacraments you can receive more than once, like Eucharist, like reconciliation or confession like sacrament of the sick, but all the rest that you receive one time, you only receive it at one time, but you live it perpetually, okay? So through sacramental grace, there's this constant reassurance that God has saved us, that he's present and real in our life through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the church, through these sacraments. Here, there, the, you ever, you ever hear this? Okay, I got some bad news. I got some good news. <laughs> what do you want first? Oh, give me the bad news. Here's the bad news. We're broken. We are. And we need fixing. Why are we broken? Because we give into our self-centeredness, which leads us to sin, which means to choose something other than God as the focus of our life. Because if you haven't made the connection yet, to be fulfilled in this world and for all eternity is to have God number one in your life, to be the focus. It changes everything. If we live that way, then we feel joy all the time, no matter what's going on around us in our personal life, our community, or the world. But the reality is we can live that way for a while in this joy, and we start sliding back into, I want to do things my way. I want to be in charge. I'm going to be self-centered. I'm going to put myself before God and before others. Then it, it, it evolves, right? So there's some flaw within the human being that is broken, and we can't fix it ourselves. We're incapable of completely overcoming sin on our own. We need a Savior. And that's what Jesus is. Here's the good news. God loved us so much, he didn't leave us this way. So God the Father sent his only son. John 3, 16, right? The most famous Bible verse in the whole world. It's repeated more than all the rest. For God so Love the world that he gave his only son. So that the world, we would not be condemned, but we would have life and have it to the fullest. And isn't that what we just started with? To have fulfillment and joy. That's what God wants for us. The truth is, we can't do that without Jesus. We are fundamentally flawed. So it's Jesus, if he sinned, if he's death, invites us to begin sharing now in eternal life so heaven's supposed to begin right now we're not supposed to wait until we die heaven is simply living in the fullness of god's love the more and more we live in god's love and make it our focus the more that we are already living in heaven okay time to chat some more here we go this is what we're really talking about sacraments so, real quickly, again, in your groups, this is going to be three minutes. Come up with a definition of sacrament. What is a sacrament? Don't tell me a kind of sacrament. Tell me what sacraments are. Do it real quick. Huddle with your group.
All right, anyone have a, a definition idea for what is a sacrament? It's cheating if I tell you. Um, you, you guys I'm ever watch those? I would... <laughs> you ever watch those Disney shorts? You know, the Pixar shorts? Anybody have Disney Plus? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the interviews with Forky. Hey, Forky, what is a sacrament? Have you, ever, you guys don't know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, I, I got grandkids. I know all that that stuff. <laughs> I haven't seen Plus, but I haven't seen You haven't Porky. seen it? Oh, go to Pixar and see the shorts with Porky. They're okay. hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, go <laughs> ahead. What's the sacrament? How would you define it? I defined it with a lot of words, actually. If anybody is listening, could you condense it into what do you think a sacrament is? Like the receiving of grace. Good. Of That's a great start. Keep going. Um, so you're receiving grace. Receiving means there is someone who is giving what you're receiving, right? So who's the giver? God, who? Jesus. God is, yeah. And what's the gift? Finish that up. You got one minute. Is it the gift of happiness? I don't know. Or like if you fall, I don't know. That's what he was kind of talking about. I, th I think Jeanette said it uh, when she first started. Sure. Grace. The, the gift of grace. Okay. So it's, it's you know, God gifting us grace. Okay. Is what the sacraments are. What, what, is, what is grace? Like, like I don't know what that, I, sorry, I don't. Like I get, I know Isn't that like forgiving. Is, yeah, I would say kind of like forgiveness. Okay. And like forgiving our sins or forgiving that we're flawed and we're not perfect. I, I mean, that's a hard one to define because I, you know, depending on what, I guess, which I was going to say, depending on what sacrament you're doing, you know, let's say you're yeah. getting married, the sacrament of, of, of marriage like you're not getting forgiveness, but you're getting God's grace on your marriage, right? So sure. I think it kind okay. of it kind of varies, but it's it's ultimately like love and blessing and forgiveness and just you know, yeah, a little bit of everything. But it it varies a bit depending on which sacrament we're speaking of. But ultimately, it's you know the sacrament is receiving God's grace. So all right, I think they're calling us in. Are we? Is the time? 30, yeah, twenty seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds. We're going to go back in. All right, Jeanette, you're talking this time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. All right. So did what I say leading up to this question make sense to you? I saw a lot of people nodding their heads. Did it make sense? <clears throat> Would it be easy to repeat everything I just said over the last 10 minutes? That's why we want to land on something simple. So if you simplify what we were talking about, what would be a simple definition of? You go home tonight and someone in your home says, what did you guys talk about today? We talked about sacraments. And their next question is, so what's a sacrament? How would you explain that? What did this table do? You gave them the definition. <laughs> oh, team, oh, team. Remember, we lead them to from the Baltimore Catechism. All right, so you're, you're, you're looking ahead to my next slide. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so what did you land on? What's the key here? It's a gift. How about this group? That's what we did. That's what we did. We said. Okay. Well, we, we first started with a blessing. Yeah, it was a blessing. Okay. So, what does it mean? A blessing. A blessing. <laughs> you remember that movie, Chevy Chase? This is vacation. Said it was a blessing from the Lord, and then I wrote down a sacrament. Like, I was down, and I wrote down what we said, 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 and I w
Okay. So a blessing is a good start. A blessing is what? <laughs> Something that comes from God, right? When you wake up in the morning and you realize you're alive and the sun is shining, is that a blessing? Yes. Is that a sacrament? No. no. I don't know. Depends on our definition. But I think we, I, I think, yeah, it's a good start. You narrow it to a gift. What do we mean when we say gift? Okay, so we all agree it's a gift. I figured you'd get that far, right? <laughs> so to have a gift, what do you need? A giver. A giver. So who's the giver of the gift? God. Yeah, and specifically through, through Jesus. Okay, so it's a gift from God, right? And you have to have a recipient. But the gift is actually something <laughs> too, right? So what is that thing? that God gives to us in every sacrament. Each sacrament's different, but they're, they're the same in this. Each sacrament is a different expression, experience of what? Grace. Grace. Love that word. What does grace mean? God's life. You said life. God's life. Which always means... God's love. God's love. Right? Yeah. We believe God is love, right? And, and we're created out of that love so we can receive that love and hopefully, this is our purpose, choose to be love in return to God and to everyone else who God loves, right? So grace is a an intense experience of God's own being, which is love. Good. So let's take a couple more steps here. So what we would say is grace, and therefore sacraments that deliver grace to us, it's really the lens that helps us to know God or to see God. And to understand the world in which we live, which comes from God. And to understand ourselves which is the, the, the greatest expression of God's creation. So at the heart of this narrative is the reality of something we call the incarnation. We'll get to that. So the incredibly good news is that God chose to be with us. He could have saved us anyway, right? The rescue mission, he could have sent the angels to come and rescue us, right? No, God came himself to be with us. I mean, that means a whole lot more, doesn't it, than sending an emissary for the one to come themselves. So that's the lens through which we should see everything, that God loves us so much. He came to be with us, even in our sinfulness, so that we can't help but miss the experience of his love and his life. So let's... <laughs> Let's be honest here. We're talking about mystery, right? If there's ever a mystery, it's understanding God, which is beyond God is greater than us, obviously, beyond our understanding. So when you're talking about mystery, it's tough. It's tough to talk about, and it's tough to wrap your mind around. But the mystery at the heart of our faith is this. From death comes life. That's the Christian belief. Not everyone in the world would agree with that. But that's the heart of what we believe, the mystery. From death comes life. Death, Christ coming and giving his whole self to us, we share in God's life. And if we choose to share in God's life, it means our death isn't the end. It is a doorway or a means to the fullness of life. So when we're talking about mystery, we have to learn the language of mystery. The language of mystery tends to be way more than spoken language. Um, so human beings recognize in the most profound moments of life that words often come short. Have you ever gone on a hike and you press the mountain and there's a sunset and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in the world. And you're hiking with someone. And just to speak at that moment would ruin it, right? Who words could be better than that? Huh? Or how about people 
who have given their lives to each other, husband and a wife. Sometimes the most profound moments together have not one word to do with it because there's something deeper going on there than what can even be expressed in words. So therefore, signs and symbols and gestures and rituals can bring us and draw us deeper into the mystery than just the spoken word. That's the language of mystery as much as anything. So why rituals? Well, let me give you an example. Rituals are the way we do things, right? Okay. So I remember this clearly a couple of years ago. So my granddaughter was a year and a half. And she just began to speak, the one that you, you see around here, that she lives nearby. And um, she's trying to run in the front yard, and she takes a header, and she skins her knee, and she's mm -hmm. crying. And what does she say to me when she's done crying? Papa, kiss it. Papa, kiss it. So that's what mommy does, right? Daddy, when, when it, it hurts, you give it a kiss. Now, come on, really? Does kissing it really make it better? Does it take the pain away? I mean, physically, is there any physical reality in that? No, and that's not the healing effect of the physicalness of that, but does it have an effect on the mind of someone who is suffering? Oh, you bet it does. You bet it does, okay? Um, a hug, a smile, giving flowers to someone, they all have a healing effect. You don't have to say a word, right? Sacraments connect us to God intimately through the incarnation. The incarnation is a fancy word for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, incarnate. You speak Spanish or Latin or any of the, of the Latin-based languages. In Spanish, it's carne. What's carne? Meat. Meat or flesh, right? God becomes in flesh, one of us. And notice, God didn't just appear like he looked, Jesus didn't just appear like he does on the cross. He was born as a helpless infant like us. There's deep, rich meaning in this, in our lives, and coming to understand the life of God, and the beauty of life, and the reason why we come helpless into family, right? I love this picture, by the way. You know why I love this? Don't say it, team. You heard it before. Look at this closely. There's something surreal about this. I think the, the lights on Joseph's face, even though it's coming from the... There you go. You got it. Usually it takes a few people. It's the light. The light's the most powerful part of this, other, other than the facial expression. But you realize the light in the cave is coming from somewhere behind and off to the side of Joseph, right? So his, his face should really be in shadow. But his face is lit up. Why? What's the source of light here? Jesus, this helpless baby, right? That's been given to Mary and Joseph to protect, to nurture, to raise. Powerful stuff. This is the beginning of sacramental life. This is the power right here. You see? God coming as one of us. God giving his whole self and holding nothing back. That's true love. Sacrifice. How am I doing on time? Uh, you know, let's see, we need to break what in about five ten minutes, huh? Cassandra? Okay. Uh, actually, no, you're, you're up after this next slide. You ready? <laughs> All right, one more slide. So we're talking about signs and symbols and rituals. Okay. At the intersection of heaven and earth, another way to say that is a type of sign language. Here's another way to say it. You know, for people who can't hear physically, spoken words, difficult, unless they can read to learn to learn to read lips, right? But but what is the way that they can communicate? Non-verbally, sign language. They have to use another part of their body, right? Because they, they can't hear speak the spoken word. All right. So this sign language is sacramentally oil. Wine, bread, fire, water. All kinds of different things in sacraments. To enter the mystery of sacraments, we use these things. A white garment of baptism. Huh? 
But we have things outside the sacraments that have meaning. Crucifix, like on the wall there. Holy water, stained glass windows, incense, rosaries, medals. See, the Catholic Church is rich in these things. Some people don't understand. They point it as a weakness. Like we rely on these things because we don't have a relationship with God. No, 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 no. It's not a distraction. These are things that give a depth to and pull us deeper into the mystery. Um, let's see. By the way, the primary language of God, do you know what that is? Latin. <laughs> Actually, before you said Latin, you guys all had it right. The primary language of God is silence. <laughs> God doesn't need to speak out loud. God does at times, we know. But God speaks through silence. If we want to hear God speaking to our heart, we have to be comfortable with silence. That's an important part of our tradition, too. Song, storytelling, a third of what Jesus teaches in the Bible, he does through parables, simple stories about people's regular lives, farming, fishing, baking bread, things like that. It's like everybody knew that stuff. What's so big about that? Ah, he had the ability of connecting something deep about the truth of God's love to us by connecting us to simple things in life we already Whatever, whatever works for you. Oh, yeah. All right, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. All right, so defined by the Baltimore Catechism of 1885, a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by God mm -hmm. to give grace. And I think, Mike, this is how you were kind of raised. Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm so weird, I have catechism on my phone. Uh, all right, so the younger generations may not know this, but um, so this was in, in student 1885 as a way to like teach the children the faith, and their way of doing that was having them memorize things to like repeat things, but it wasn't necessarily a way to understand them and know them and feel them. Which, you know, really is kind of what you need, right? Be a faithful person. And so this was in place until the late 60s or early 70s. So, the outward sign. These are the, the physical things, the tangible things we see, we taste, we feel, we touch, that we use to symbolize um, Our, our graces. So, can you guys tell me who this picture of? Jesus. So, the Catholic Church doesn't sugarcoat it. So, we, we display Jesus with his scars in his hands because it symbolizes, you know, the power of his love that, you know, he gave us by coming and sacrificing his life, you know, for us. And so, our images, you know, you see the crucifix. Like, other, other churches, religions don't necessarily show that, but... So our grace began with Jesus dying on the cross, kind of where it all started. That's where, you know, we're forgiven and, and we get a clean slate and we get to start. So let's get into the sacraments. So a sacrament is a means by which God shares his life with us. This is our grace. So Vatican II in the early 60s gathered people from all over the world and different religions to figure out how to help um, people connect with the faith and the teachings. Um, an individual can't get a sacrament alone. It requires a minister. It requires, you know, a gathering of God's people. So when one person receives uh, sacramental grace, the entire church is rejuvenated, you know, by you receiving that. So, you know, it's not while, while you get it and you, you know, feel that, the entire congregation feels that with you. So you're not alone there. I'm going to lift these fingers to that and mask them. <laughs> Is it time to chat already? You guys doing okay? <laughs> Any questions? 
I, hey, so don't, don't, don't go back too, too quickly. Go, go back to the, the website. Okay? Everybody, even if it's just 30 seconds, team, check with, check with your group. Because sometimes there's questions that it's like, okay, okay, but let's keep going because this is good. Check and see. Are there any questions? Yeah. 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 Okay, peeps online. Any questions? Anything needs some clarification? Go ahead and unmute yourself. No, we're all good. No questions here. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so when she asked, are there any questions that were crooked? When we said check in at the table, everybody talked. So what, what did we talk about in, in like 20, 30 seconds? What did each table really talk about? Okay, that's why we want to check in with you. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Just a, a bit, maybe too fast, or I, I don't know. Okay. I'm just tired. All right, so go back to the definition we came up with after we chatted last time. What is it? Sacraments are a from, which gives us grace, grace which is a, an intimate experience of God's life and God's love, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but this is not easy stuff because we're talking about God. So we're in the area of mystery, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so for us to understand, it's not going to work really well just to throw words at you and you're going to observe it right away and go, got it first time, right? It takes some getting used to. But it's also why when, when God gives us sacraments, he speaks to us beyond words. And so how does God speak to us beyond words? Through signs symbols and rituals okay so we're going to talk about each of these individual sacraments in depth and in that time we're going to look at why did he choose bread why did he choose wine in baptism why do we have so many symbols we got water and oil and fire and 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 white garment and ooh, there's so much there Okay, if you just came and you just looked at it and, and never really tried to open up to it, it, it would just go like this, right? And I'll bet we've been to a lot of baptisms where we watch all that and went, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, we're going to know, okay? So I'm glad you said that because, yeah, if this is the first time you're trying to be engaged from a mature adult perspective, it is a lot, and it should feel like you, you, you're in the... Um, uh, you're, you're driving at the pace of the slow lane, but you're in the fast lane, and cars are going by like this. Yeah. I'm looking at you and giving you the finger. You <laughs> <laughs> won't do that to you. Yeah. Okay, what else? What did this table talk about? So we, we were control. <laughs> Under control. <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> no, I, we were asking everybody. They go, they're good. Okay, everybody's good here. How about here? What did this table talk about? We talked a little bit about a little easier to grasp than it is to repeat our situation. It's a little easier, I understand, than it would be to teach somebody about it. Okay. But isn't that true about anything that um, is complex? The first time you listen to somebody who's got it down, it sounds like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then they say, okay, now you explain. You go, huh? Okay. So part of what we need to say is this is natural. But it also means that we're meeting you where we're supposed to. Remember I said, it, no more time to dumb things down. God wants to immerse you in this. God wants to begin something where from this day forward, you're going to be so open that you'll continue every year to, to be engaged more. And you'll feel like every year you go to mass, it means something more. Every time you go to a baptism or wedding, it means something more because each time you're being drawn deeper. Okay? Are we okay that that it's a lot? But you understand that's exactly where we need to be, right? Okay, good. And I'll speak from experience the first time I heard this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I left here like I have no clue what's going on. I think we talked about it the next week, and I still am like, I've got no clue what's going on. 
it took me a while to kind of understand what I was hearing. And it took me a long while to feel what I was hearing and like get it. And I've got, I haven't gotten to the place where I can explain it to other people well, obviously. No, 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 no. But it's a process. It's a process. <laughs> but, but I totally understand the position of just like, I don't even, I mean, I hear the words you're saying and I know what they mean, but I don't really know what you're saying. So I think that that's. This is a big step for Tanya. This is the first time she stood up and yeah. tried. Yeah. To... Yeah. Why I'm really encouraging her is you realize she's in your position, well, three years ago at the start. Sure. Did half of our CIA took a break and came back and finished last year. So in a very real sense, she's where you were at only a year ago. Mm -hmm. But she's where you're going to be in a year, which means having received and is now living Sacramento Grace. So since you brought that up, talk about that a little bit now. So talk about, you already talked about what it was like the first time you heard this. If whatever, whatever way you want to explain it, the reason why you, you stopped when you came back, how it was different, and now how it's different even still after having received, received sacraments. That'd be nice for me to hear. Okay, so I, I married a Catholic man. I, was, I'm not, I wasn't Catholic, I'm just now. I wasn't <laughs> Catholic uh, and had zero exposure to the Catholic Church, you know, coming into a relationship. He was okay with marrying me, not being Catholic, his family not so much. And I'm like, you know what, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll just learn about it. Like, so that I understand you guys and I understand your, your faith and whatnot. And so I came to RCA just to learn. I did not have any intention of getting baptized. I didn't intend to become Catholic. It was just to learn. And I came in, I think, questioning everything. And I'm super skeptical. I thought, why? Like, why does it have to be that way? And so I don't think I really, like, heard everything because I was listening to it with like a skeptical mind like how am I going to argue this right and I will I will I will second that because I had conversations with you and you were tense <laughs> <laughs> I have opinions <laughs> oh um, so when they got to the point of like declaring like oh you be baptized I'm like yeah no like I'm done like see you later I'm out of here and so I left for for a while and then uh, you know a series of events happened in my life that I think there were several things that kept kind of pushing me back. I think the the, the straw that really did it for me was um, my mother-in-law passed away before I got married, uh, unexpectedly, and it was just heartbreaking for the entire family. And her husband, they'd been married for 60 years, wanted nothing more than to die so that he can go be with her and be in heaven and be with God. That's all he wanted. They had nine kids. And his stance was like, forget you kids. I want to be with Jesus. I want to be with my wife. Like, <laughs> and his just faith in knowing that there was a better place to be than with his own children started getting me thinking like, what are you doing this wrong? Like, I want to have, when I'm dying, I want to know, like, I've got a better place to be. Right, because any other time sucks. Nobody wants to die. Um, and so to have that like comfort of knowing you're going to a better place really made me kind of question what I was doing in my faith. And then my then 14 year old daughter uh, was like, "Mom, I don't understand why you stopped RCA." I'm just like, "Huh?" It's like, "What do you have to lose? If you're wrong, you live your life." righteously and morally you follow the chief teachings of the church which isn't a bad thing if you're right you get to go to heaven <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> uh, thank you 14 year old and so i called Nathan Don. i'm like i'm ready to to get back into rca and i came into it with this just open heart that made my experience so different because i wasn't questioning everything i was like listening and trying to understand and feel it and know and I would just say real quickly for like me and Trish and, and um, Mike and everyone that have been here, I remember when you came the first time too. I remember you raising your hand and you said, well, if I choose to do this, like you were premising, like I'm not sold on. And then you, then you left, but you come back and you're one of the people I remember because you're so different in your faith now and you could totally, but it's been so different. You're, you're probably one that I, were, that I will remember from my time here in the last five years. It's, I, I, I hope I wasn't difficult. No, it just you you just weren't ready. 
and then you came back and you were a totally different person. And just and you're, the way you interact here, I think it's wonderful. I, you're, I've seen you just change so much in the time I've known you. I, and I barely even know you. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. It feels <laughs> so good. And when I got baptized, I didn't like know what to expect. Like I knew like, here's the steps, you're gonna go here and do this and say that or whatever. But I didn't expect the feeling that I felt in that moment. And I've got two teenagers, they're 15, 16 now, who got baptized with me um, of their own accord. Like I never pushed them, I never asked them. They were just like, we would like to do this. I'm like, okay. So we all did it together um, at the Easter Vigil this year. And like, I remember walking to the back of the church and was like, holy cow, <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. Like it was just this, Reading weight off my shoulders, like I've got a new life. Nothing, nothing else matters. Like I, I'm ready to go from here. So I agree with everything you said except one thing. One thing needs to be corrected. The per the first time we spoke about you coming back wasn't a phone call. We had a phone call soon after, but it was an event. So the first baptism wasn't hers, and it wasn't Kelly's, and it wasn't Tyler's. It was. Olivia's. Olivia's, the, 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 the baby girl. I have a one-year-old. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And so it was going down to Orange County so we could be with um, father, father in law, who, yeah, my dad, who actually couldn't be there. He, he, he zoomed in. Um, and it, and it was right Orange after County. that baptism, remember? I remember walking over and you were changing Olivia afterwards, and that's when you told me you came. Is that when it was? Yeah. And I said, okay, give me a call. We had that nice conversation. The power of baptism. There you go. Okay, let's get back on track. <laughs> I just have to say, I sat with Tony the first time, and I was, I can't break this nut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they can, because you were that nut when you came. <laughs> that, you recognized true. it. Right? Yes, I did. Yeah, every once in a while it hangs up, and then you do it manually, and then it'll work out for that. Yeah. Yeah, to, to me, is our patron saint of anti-Catholic for a while. <laughs> That's why we're kindred spirits. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. All right. Can anyone tell me who that is? This isn't as easy as the Jesus picture. <laughs> St. Ignatius. St. Augustine. A lot of sign and symbol there. If you know St. Sign and Symbol, you might decide for that. Go ahead. All right, so St. Augustine said that uh, sacrament is a visible sign of an invisible grace. How do I get rid of that? Uh, this, to me, was the definition that, that sunk in for me, that I understood. A visible sign of an invisible grace. You need water for baptism. You can't see the grace of baptism. You can see the water. Um, you know, the Eucharist, you can see the bread, you can taste the bread. So to me, this is my favorite definition uh, of a sacrament, because to me it's the easiest to remember. <laughs> um, and it's just the most like simple, clear, not confusing, not a lot of words. I did, yeah, because it wasn't going to work. Now it'll work. <laughs> All right, so the sacraments are efficacious signs of grace instituted by Christ and entrusted to the church by which divine life is dispensed to us. Ooh. That's a lot of words. That's St. Thomas, a lot of words. Yeah. Um, but I think ultimately it's the symbol affects what's going on and what's going on affects the symbol. Am I okay there? Like, mm -hmm. Things that we see affect the way that we feel, and vice versa. The way we feel affects the things that we see. If we're in a bad mood, we're not going to look at a puppy and be like, oh my gosh, that's the cutest puppy. And it's like, eh, puppy. If you're in a good mood, you see a puppy, you're like, oh my gosh, it's the cutest puppy. Right? So, like, you know, how you feel is going to affect the way that you take things in. So, when we talk about sacraments individually and we look at the signs, we'll come back to this because every sign not only points to the meaning of that sacrament, but God uses that medium as a way for us to actually experience that sacrament, okay? I know, 
is my word. Uh, so, so the top reads. So, what's the most important thing to know about sacraments? Uh, they reflect God's one desire, unity, to be in a relationship with us and fulfill our fundamental longing. We learn about sacraments so we can actually live them. So, the sacraments help us grow and live them. Um, when we open our hearts. So if we go back to that basic definition, sacraments are a gift. Think about it this way. A gift is intended not just to be received and go, oh, that's so nice you gave me that gift. I really feel, I appreciate that. And then you go put it in the closet and never use it. You know, the giver knew that's what you did with the gift. Right. It, it lacks all meaning, right? So we learn about sacraments so we can live sacraments. They're supposed to be life-changing. We'll, we'll talk more about that after break. Let's take a break. Right? Yeah. Just rush up <laughs> that always happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our break's going to be about eight to ten minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
All right, who do we lose? We lost Jeanette. No, Jeanette's here. Who do we lose? Olivia, uh, Olivia right? Josh, back. Come on back, Jeanette. Or Claudia. We, we love, we miss. Claudia dropped out. Huh? Yeah, she left a while ago. I heard somebody leave, but I didn't see who it was till now. All right, let's bring this home. All right, time to bring in the closer. Let's go. The Dodgers are uh, tied 4 4 in the eighth. So uh, they need to get a run and then bring in the closer. Of course, I checked during the break. Didn't all of you? Some people recorded the game to watch later. Oh. Well, now, now you still don't know who won. Nor oh. do you know how either team scored. So there you go. And and if you know Tony, you know she's just making my kids. Yeah, she's not watching the game. Oh my goodness. Why don't you like a real sport? Not a Dodger fan. Wow. All right. And so. 
let's let's gather together here a little bit of what we have so we can move forward on the, the final stage for today. So keep it in mind that we learn about sacraments so that we can live sacraments. That's what we said right before the break. Right now, as a large group, without the team speaking in a word, remember, you're going to speak God's language, silence. Everybody else, name the seven Catholic sacraments. Can you name them? Baptism, that's a good one to start with. Reconciliation. Reconciliation, sometimes called penance or confession. That's two. Communion, Eucharist, there's three. Confirmation, we're on a roll. Four out of seven. <laughs> Marriage. Marriage, five out of seven. We're getting ready for that too, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, ordination. Ordination, great. We're missing one. So we call that the sacrament of holy orders. Because that's when a man is ordained to either be a deacon, a priest, or a bishop. Anointing of the Spirit. Okay. Last night, right, that shows that shows uh, the, the three pre Vatican two days or the Baltimore Catechism, right? But it used to be called last right. Uh, now we call it what, Charlie? Right? Anointing of the Spirit. Anointing of the Spirit. Okay. And we'll talk about the reason why we shifted in language from one to the other. It can be the last rites. But we don't want to wait till somebody's on their deathbed if they're in need of healing to have the sacrament. So we now call it sacrament. Okay, good. What's the unique experience of each gift? So what's the unique experience of grace for each of these sacraments? Well, let's start with this little bit of structure. And this will set us up for talking about sacraments more in depth. But you, you notice there are uh, the pictures there of sacraments. These are all images. And you see three descriptions, categories. One's called initiation, the second, healing, and the third, mission. The third has, you, you hear it described other ways too, I prefer mission. Okay. So, what does initiation mean? Like to join something like to, to join something. Um, and initiation is even more specific than that. So you can join, but you're not fully a member until you go through the whole initiation, right? You go through every aspect that makes you qualified to be a full member. There are three sacraments that do that for us in the family of God. What does healing mean? Mend a wound. It's, it's to mend or restore, to bring to wholeness, right? And then finally, what is mission? It has to do with purpose, you're right, but it is what in relation to purpose? The directive. <clears throat> if you are on mission, you are achieving the purpose, right? It's an action, right? It's not just a descriptive. So you can have a mission statement that describes, but if you're on mission, you're engaged, right? You're actively making the mission happen. Okay. Here's the sacraments of initiation. They go together. Baptism and confirmation are linked together. You can't separate them. And we'll explain in some detail next week what that really means. And Eucharist. All three of these sacraments bring us into full initiation, full membership in God's family, the church. Sacraments of healing, reconciliation. Right? Reconciliation makes sense. Reconciliation is when two are disconnected, they become connected again. There's, you can understand how that's healing. And anointing of the sick, bringing... Um, God's grace to people who are experiencing sickness and suffering. And notice in parentheses, and Eucharist. When we talk about Eucharist, we'll hear how it's not just nurturing, but in a very real sense, it's medicine for our souls. And then mission, matrimony, marriage, and holy orders, <coughs> and Eucharist. Are you noticing something? This is why when we talk about Eucharist, we're going to say it's the source and the summit. It's the very heart of everything we are, and it's the highest. Because in, in receiving the Eucharist, 
faithfully we receive the fullness of God's divinity of Christ, and we have a chance to give more of ourselves to God in relationship. It's a mutual exchange. That's what faith is. Remember, faith is first and foremost <coughs> our relationship with God, not just what we believe. Okay. And so, in a very real way, Eucharist is part of the fullness of participating in God's family. It's, it has healing properties. And it is the food that gives us the energy in our mission to engage. And what is our mission? So that everyone knows the good news of God's love. Everything we're talking about. Okay? Go out in the world, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And proclaim that good news of the power of God's love. All right, let's let's watch a quick little video only because it does such a good job. This is Christophonic again in helping us understand something in a very concise way. And the visual is so good. Do you mind, um, Jason? Thank you. <clears throat> You know, the Christian notion of who God is in Jesus Christ turns all our understandings about God upside down. I mean, it's really, it's not what anybody could have dreamt up when they thought of God. I mean, there's no way just any person wrote this story. Uh, we think of gods and they'd be conquering kings. And here comes Jesus doing these really simple, humble things that are really focused on, on the individual person. His first miracle. You know, mine would have been something really extreme, man. I would have just turned the sky different colors and threw a couple lightning bolts and said, Hey, I'm God. I'm here. Listen to me. He turns water into wine to keep a party going. Who cares? Look, even his most amazing miracles, and they were pretty amazing. He could just say to someone, get up, who was dead, and the person would get up and be alive again. That's a big deal. But from a historic standpoint, the people he did this for, they weren't kings, they weren't emperors. It was some random kid in Palestine 2,000 years ago who ended up dying again, you know, 40 years later. What's the big deal? Who cares? In the eyes of God, that person was important enough. That one person, that single interaction he had was, was worth dying for. See, he came for that person. He came for you. This God would sit down at dinner and take time with people. God's real desire, it's to be with you. He even started a church for you. All this is for you. I mean, the reason that we sanctify and consecrate anything and make it holy is because God wants to make you holy. The reason we have churches and temples is because God wants to make you his temple. He came to dwell in you. This is why he created us in the first place. This is why he dreamt us up for a relationship with himself. That the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, before time began, thought of making you part of the communion of persons. And when we wandered from his plan, came to bring us back into friendship with himself. And how far would he go to establish that friendship with mankind, that relationship we were born for, to fix our sin problem? our separation from him, our separation from the, the reason we were made, for that love we were made for, all the way to the cross. How do you make the most out of your life, out of that dash between the start date and the end date that'll someday be on your tombstone? It's to draw close to Jesus. He's the source of life itself. Pope Benedict XVI said, the happiness you're looking for, the happiness you have a right to enjoy, has a face and a name. It's Jesus. See, that's why all the stuff that we do as Christians, it's not about adding to-dos to our already overwhelmingly busy lives. The stuff we do as Christians is about drawing near to the source of life itself. It's not about proving our love for him. It's about opening our hearts to receive, to receive what he did for us.
at the crossroads of time, at the center of human history, at the center of every longing we've ever had for happiness, there stands a man who asks the question, what are you looking for? And it turns out, maybe he not only knew the answer, but was the answer. That means that all your longing for happiness, all your longing for that life you were made for, you're only gonna find it if he's the Lord of your entire life. How do we respond to the radical claims of Christianity, the radical claims that Jesus made about himself? The way you answer that question changes everything. So who do you say that he is? Powerful, huh? Not just the images, but just the way he can say that so succinctly. Hey, Sean, did you catch that? Yeah. You started off our group conversation with, um, what's that fundamental longing? It's that search for happiness, right? Yeah. And what he said was, it's not only happiness we're looking for it's not it's not just a search it's something we have a fundamental right for we're created for that kind of fulfillment and that we're only going to get there if we realize and this is what i love about how chris Plank said that that happiness has a face and a name and is a real person and that's what this whole journey is going to be to come to open ourselves more up to that real person and allow that person to be the focus of our life. We do that, we're, we experience true fulfillment. Built that up so well and then I failed on the next part. Right? There we go. There we go. Never done this before. There we go. So, one more time. What happens to a person based on what you just heard Chris explain so well? What happens to a person when they receive a sacrament? Yeah. And what do you mean by enlightenment? Okay, we may have a strong feeling of peace and fulfillment. That's good, but it's more than a feeling. Okay, what happens when he says that this source of happiness has a face and a name? What's really happening there in a sacrament? We're made holy. We're made holy. Holy means to be like God, right? Okay. So yeah, that, that's a really good answer. It's this relationship with God becomes more real and we come to understand really who we are. If we're created in the image and likeness of God, we're created to be loved and we're created to love. To love the way that is true love that Jesus shows us, that our lives aren't about our own, ourselves. Remember, uh, Tani said that when an individual receives a sacrament. It's not just the individual receives grace. The whole church does. Why? This is what happens. <laughs> Conversion. Conversion is a powerful change. It change from one thing to another. What is this transformation that's happening? We're being changed more and more into who we're created to be. Not the persona we take on or the masks we want to wear or the person that other people or the world is telling us we are, but who we really are. It's this great transformation. Think of it this way. The power of true love is in sharing this grace, this life, this love of God. It's so powerful. It comes into an individual transforms them more and more into who they really are 
but it's so great, God's life and God's love, no human being can contain it. So it's supposed to go right through us to others. So the more we become who we are created to be, the better we are at allowing that to flow through us and touch other people's lives in a powerful way. So we're all going to be better and better instruments of the power of God's love of grace. That's what we're being transformed into. All of us are being transformed into being an image of Christ. The more we become who we are, the more people see in us the presence of Christ. There's an old story about an older woman who went to Toys R Us to buy a bunch of presents for her grandchildren. And outside of Toys R Us was a mother and a daughter who obviously were poor, probably hungry. And so moved with compassion, the older woman talked to the mother and said, is it okay if I buy your daughter a Christmas gift? And the mother was overjoyed knowing that she wasn't going to be able to. And she said, well, why don't you both come in with me? And she turned to the girl and said, you can pick any toy you want at the store. And the little girl's eyes just went in. <laughs> and as she proceeded, the grandmother to go around and buy different gifts for her grandkids, the little girl saw each of these gifts. That would be great. That would be great. So she goes through this whole point and she hasn't picked a gift. And so the grandmother finally says, anything, what do you want? And she goes back and she picks the doll that she saw that she wanted. Goes up to the register, they all check out. They go outside, the grandmother's getting ready to go over and load her car with all of her purchases, and she hands the doll to the little girl. And the little girl says, thank you. And the mother's got tears coming down her eyes, and she mouths the word, thank you. And the grandmother tells them, Merry Christmas, turns around to go, and the little girl grabs her by the hand and says, wait, wait. And she says, what? And the little girl says to her, are you Jesus? Mm -hmm. And she said, no, but I'm a real good kid. <laughs> okay. So it's so, supposed to be so transformative that the way we live our lives, people see Christ in us. Um, saints have said throughout the ages, we're supposed to be mini Christ. No, not the mini, mini Christ. The movies, <laughs> but a mini Christ. That's what we're called to be more and more. Okay. That's a Christian perspective. All right, let's end with a little challenge here. If I didn't blow your mind enough, Connie and I together, then let's do this. All right, so answer me this. If the sacraments are the most important gifts God gives us, if that's true, then answer me this question. Which of these sacraments is the most important? Eucharist. He didn't even hesitate. He said Eucharist. Right. Anybody have a different answer? Nothing's more important than the real presence of Jesus. Nothing could be more important, right? right? Anybody else? Different idea? Baptism. Why would you say baptism? Yeah, you can't even get to Eucharist if you're not baptized first. That's some logical thinking, right? And when we talk about baptism next week, you're going to think, oh my God, what could be better than this? You know, the theologians have debated those two sacraments over and over for all the logical reasons we, we, we are already just jumping into naturally. And you know what that is? That's like a, a theological exercise that is, for all intents and purposes, if it goes longer than the 30 seconds we just did, it's a waste of time. <laughs> because they're all the gift of God's own self, his life and his love, all of them in a unique way but all of them similarly drawing us more and more into this real relationship with God. Remember, what's the gift? Grace, God's life, God's love. It is a gift. And it's a gift that we receive because it's a gift that is given. That's relationship too, right? 
but it's also a gift that's meant to be shared. I'm fairly certain you are here, not just on your own accord responding to a tug on your heart, but because of the example of some good people who are living sacramental lives. And guess what? That's supposed to be you. It will be you. So let this be our prayer. As we come to know these truths, so may we live these truths. Amen. Amen. You believe? Amen. And say it like you believe. Amen. Amen. And throughout this week, let this filter through some, it's a lot, I know, but you also know that I post this usually within 24 hours, the PowerPoint online, as well as the audio. So you can go back and listen to this like a podcast if you want, where you're doing your jog or your walk or you're driving in the car. It is a lot. So you're not going to pick it up all at one time. So go back and listen some more. Remind us on where it is. You go to the parish website. How about we just, uh, I show it to you too. That's a good teacher would show you. <laughs> all right, here we go. We've got a few minutes. Let's do that. So you go to our parish website. All right, here we go. If you can't remember our website, just type in O L A Church Ventura and it comes up. Yes. Yes, thank you. All right, everybody online can see now too. All right, very simple. Come on up to sacraments. Scroll down to right of Christian initiation for adults. And there you go, a whole web page. You go here to our calendar, click on that. You all had to click on this to register. You remember that button? And here is the 2021, 2022 current RCIA recordings and PDF files. And you can see they're all um, by, here's the, the, these are the um, audio and slideshows. And we do them in order, as you can see. So here's last week's. And within about 24 hours, hopefully before the end of tomorrow, you'll see the uh, PowerPoint in a PDF format that will correspond with the audio recording. You should also know that for one week, the video recording of this is available. So there, there's a couple of people that missed today. So they'll get an email from me tomorrow with a link to see the Zoom recording of this. If you ever think, you know what, I don't want to just listen to it. I want to watch the whole thing again with the PowerPoint ensconced. And I want to see that Christophonic video again. Just send me a text or send me an email and say, would you send me the recording, the audio, the uh, video recording, the link? Okay. Great. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your week. Spend some time again, allowing this to filter more deeply into your heart. And come ready to dive deeply into the sacrament of baptism and confirmation next week. We can leave the chairs and the tables as they are, but if you want to help Diana with table pods and whatever else, that'd be great. All right, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and those you love this week, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to share the good news. All right, thanks, John. Thanks, Shadan. Thank you.
Thanks for hanging in there all the way. I'll, I'll take a call and see what happens. Hopefully, this is okay. Have a great week. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.